So here we are in the heart of the Yorkshire Dales to learn a little bit more about a special bird that lives in this delicate environment that I would like to see appear on more dinner tables. My work as a chef has taken me all over the world, fooling all sorts of people, from the England football team through to movie stars. But my real passion is game, and for me, Red Grouse really is Premier League. Today, I've been invited on my first ever grouse shoot. This is an informal family walked up day. The host is Mark Hancock. He's only recently taken on the moor, and he's not only trying to preserve the wildlife here, he also wants to preserve the tradition of grouse shooting, which is why today the dads are walking and the boys are shooting. Most of what we're doing here is for the long term. Now, in most other facets of life, particularly these days, everything seems to be much more short term. Whether it's business, whether it's pleasure, people are wanting more short term fixes. What we're trying to do here is build something, not just for the next year or five years, but really for the next generation, the generation right. after that. Your children's children, so on and so forth. Yes. Fantastic. The line moves off on the first drive, and incredibly, the first bird of the day falls to me. What a fantastic start. The terrain's amazing. It's uh, sort of knee-deep heather, and uh, we've only done 200 yards, and it's, yeah, you know you've done it already. It's so far, so good, it's brilliant. The going is tough, and the birds are definitely here. The grouse break cover, and the tally is building steadily. After an hour, we drive to the top of the moor for some lunch. The cabin is a cosy escape from the wet weather. But once everyone is fed and watered, I grab Mark again to find out a little more about moor management. There's obviously a bigger picture here. Um, me being a chef, I understand from a sort of hotel background that you know, with this heather that you've got, this obviously you've got the grill shoot, but obviously it's, it's much bigger than that. You, you bring in families and they, they, they stay in the local hotels and they spend money in the local restaurants. Obviously puts some money back into the, into the high streets and in, in the local towns. So it is a much bigger picture than just grill shooting, isn't it? Absolutely. When I started this, it was the shooting that was exciting and appealing to me. The more I understand what goes on here, it's a far bigger picture, which involves the restoration, the enhancement, the improvement of the landscape. So by working hard now to ensure that we preserve them and at the same time bring people into the dales, bring people onto the moors who are contributing to the economy, that's fantastic. And as you touch on with being a chef, actually what is being produced up here is food and then that food is being served in our local pubs and restaurants and, and, and en enabling them. So it's, it becomes a circular debate, which is the bit that really excites me now. The second drive is also successful for all the shooters, and I get another couple of shots off. I think they're just very fast. As soon as they're up, they're away. Um, so it's just get on and push through them and, and shoot. Um, just a little bit of lead, not much, because they're, they're so bloody fast. They've lost birds here to bad weather, but they're still a healthy population. One of the reasons is heather burning, something I've never really understood. Amanda, can you tell me why you've got three different uh, heights of heather in, in this space just here? Absolutely. The, the gamekeeper has two main jobs, and one of them is burning the heather in very controlled, careful patches. So it gives a mosaic, a patchwork quilt of different ages and different heights. The reason for that is, is all about the heather, trying to get it to regenerate. Because it's the, the very fresh shoots here that the grass eat. Okay and that's tender and full of nutrition for them. So heather burning is all about creating that regeneration of the heather and also giving them everything they need in their little territory. So you've got, this will be, I don't know, on this more maybe three or four years it was burnt. You can see the stalks are left here and you've got this lovely growth. Over here, you can see that that might be ready for burning in a year or two. It's getting quite long, a bit leggy, um, and the keeper will burn another little patch. This will keep growing. And over there, you can see that that's already coming away. Right. So you've got cover for the grouse where they'll nest, nice fresh shoots to feed. It's not all about the grouse though. Because of these different niches that are created, it's fantastic for other wildlife. On here, for instance, you might have a golden plover or nest right in the middle. He likes to see what's coming, all the predators around him. Okay. Curlew might like to be about half a meter into the edge here, into this long stuff. He likes to peep out and see what's coming keep it as head down. 
And the heather, the heather over there, I'd say, is probably perfect for the grass. When we were walking around today, that's where we found them, wasn't it? With 16 birds, or 8 brace, we're a happy group. But I've got things to do away from the moor. Just finished our first down the grouse moor, my first time on a grouse moor, and to top it all, I shot four grouse, which is fantastic. But I never understood the depth that goes into managing a, a grouse moor like this. As you can look around and you've got you know, this wildlife, this landscape, and it all impacts the local community. But what we're going to do now is we're going to head off back to the kitchen. I'm going to take these birds with me and we're going to cook them and really do them the justice that they deserve. Chris, we just put these two birds down off the moor. Can you just quickly explain to me the difference between young and old? Because essentially what I want to do is, is take the breasts off a young bird, quick pan fry and serve that for dinner. Um, so can you just, yeah, can you show me how I would identify a young and an old bird? Yeah, well, there's numerous, numerous ways. Um, the way I use is by toenails. Okay. This, this one's very smooth. So it's a young bird, and uh, this one has a ridge in, so that makes that an old bird. Okay. Um, same, you can you can tell by the third feather, the, the differences in the third feather. A bit shorter. Shorter, and same as early on in the season, one head's very hard and okay. one head's very soft. Right. Perfect. So this is my bird for tonight to cook with. That's the young bird. So we've got our grouse um, all prepared now, ready for the oven. Um, we're going to take the breast off these. I'm going to pan fry those and serve them with a sort of um, risotto. What we're going to do essentially is like a sort of pea and mint risotto. And we're going to garnish those with some, um, some of those lovely pea shoots. Um, addition to that is that we're going to take the, um, the black pudding, make some little bonbons, and that's going to be the dish. So pan fried grouse served on a lemon pea and mint risotto with a black pudding bonbon. Once these are pan fried and cooked for four minutes, they've got to be rested for the same time. So that can be adapted to any piece of meat. So if you roast a joint for an hour, rest it for an hour. If you cook something in the oven for 30 minutes, rest it for 30 minutes. And that resting time is paramount. It just lets the moisture in the blood and inside just go back into the fibres, lets the meat relax, and it makes for a much nicer piece of meat to, to taste and to eat. Red grouse are unique to the British Isles. Many are aware of them, but possibly think they are exclusive or too expensive. Not a bit of it. From £4.50 a bird, it's worth a go. If you would like to cook one, ask your local butcher, or look online for oven-ready grouse. <laughs>